I think this is, this is capable of 100 a year. Really? Sure. For a long time, catching a giant rocket in midair was treated as impossible. The problem was not courage or software. It was physics and control. A falling booster weighs hundreds of tons. It moves fast, it sways, towers flex, metal bends. Even tiny timing errors turn into disasters. Engineers believed you could land on legs, but grabbing a rocket with arms was something nobody thought could work. The forces were too high. The movement was too chaotic. The margin for error was too small. Then SpaceX made it work. This is the story of the horizontal stabilizer system on Pad 2 and how a problem everyone avoided became real. Here is how they did it. To understand why this was so hard, you first need to picture what SpaceX is trying to do. Starship is the largest rocket ever built. When the booster comes back, it is over 70 meters tall. That is about the same size as a 15-story building. It weighs hundreds of tons even after most of its fuel is gone. It is falling from the sky at a very high speed. The engines fire to slow it down, but the vehicle is still moving around. Wind pushes against the side of the rocket. Heat from the engines warps the metal. Even the giant steel tower itself moves slightly under the pressure. Nothing is perfectly still during the catch. Traditional rockets always land on legs. The Falcon 9 rocket does this every week. It lands on a flat pad or a drone ship out in the ocean. This works because the Falcon 9 is much smaller. It weighs about 25 tons when it is empty, but the Starship booster is a different beast. If they put landing legs on it, those legs would have to be incredibly heavy to support all that weight. Landing legs strong enough for a 15-story building would add huge weight to the rocket. In the rocket business, weight is the enemy. Every pound of legs you add is a pound of cargo you cannot carry carry to space. This is why everyone said catching it was a bad idea or just plain impossible. The math did not seem to work out for the longest time. Expert consensus for decades was that rockets should be simple. The more moving parts you have, the more things can break. NASA tried to make a reusable vehicle with the space shuttle. It was a marvel of engineering, but it was very expensive. Each flight of the space shuttle ended up costing about $1.5 billion. They had to throw away the giant orange fuel tank every single time. The main engines had to be taken apart and rebuilt after every flight. It was not really like a plane that you just refuel and fly again. It was more like a high-end race car that needs a new engine after every race. Because of this, most people in the industry thought true, fast reuse was a dream that would never come true. The competitors did not even try to catch rockets. Boeing and Lockheed Martin, working together as ULA, built rockets that they threw away into the ocean after one use. They believed that the cost of building a new rocket was cheaper than the cost of trying to save an old one. This led to very high prices for everyone else. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, is a great example of this old way of thinking. One single launch of the SLS costs about $4.1 billion. That is a huge amount of money. To put that in perspective, $4.1 billion is enough money to buy every single person in a large city like Houston a brand new car. That is what we pay for just one flight that ends with the rocket sinking to the bottom of the sea. While these big companies were building expensive rockets to throw away, SpaceX was focused on mastery. They knew that if they could master the catch, they could change everything. They started with Pad 1 at their site in South Texas. Pad 1 was a test. It was the first time anyone built a tower with giant arms designed to catch a rocket. They called these arms the chopsticks. In the beginning, many people thought the arms would just crush the rocket or the rocket would smash into the tower and blow everything up. The risks were very high, but SpaceX moved forward because they saw a path to victory that nobody else could see. The breakthrough came when they realized they could stop using landing legs entirely. This is what made it work. By removing the legs, they saved about 100 tons of weight. That is about the same weight as 15 fully loaded pickup trucks. 
That is 100 tons of extra stuff they can now send to the moon or Mars. But to do this, the tower had to become more than just a stand. It had to become a robot. They designed a system of grid fins at the top of the booster. These are like metal waffle irons that steer the rocket as it falls through the air. These fins do two things. They steer the rocket toward the tower with perfect precision, and they also act as the handles that the tower arms grab onto. Here is how they actually did it. The key innovation was the horizontal stabilizer system on pad two. When the booster comes in to land, it is not just falling straight down, it is firing its Raptor engines to stay upright. These engines are incredible pieces of machinery. They use liquid methane and liquid oxygen as fuel. Unlike older engines, these can change their power very smoothly. Think of it like the gas pedal in your car. You can press it a little bit to go slow or press it all the way down to go fast. The Raptor engines can go from 40% power up to 100% power very quickly. This allows the rocket to hover for a few seconds right next to the tower. While the rocket is hovering, the tower arms have to move in. On pad one, this was a slow and careful process, but on pad two, everything is faster and stronger. The horizontal stabilizer is a set of secondary arms and sensors that keep the booster from swaying left or right. It locks the rocket into a specific spot in the air. Once the rocket is steady, the main chopstick arms close. They don't just clamp down hard. They use smart software to feel the weight of the rocket. As the engines shut off, the arms take the load. This turns a falling 15-story building into a stationary object in less than two seconds. It is a transition from extreme speed to total stillness. This technical mastery has led to a massive lead over everyone else. Let's look at the scoreboard. Boeing's Starliner program has been a series of problems. Their first big test in 2019 failed to reach the space station because the clock on the ship was wrong. Then in 2024, they had more issues that left astronauts waiting for a ride home. NASA has spent over $4.2 billion on the Starliner contract. In that same time, SpaceX has flown over 140 times in a single year. That is more than two launches every single week. While Boeing is struggling to get one ship to work, SpaceX is making space travel look like a scheduled bus route. The cost comparison is even more shocking. We already mentioned that the SLS costs $4.1 billion per launch. SpaceX says that once Starship is fully working, it will cost about $10 million per launch. This means you could launch Starship 4 10 times for the price of one SLS flight. If you launched a Starship every single day for a year, you would still spend less money than NASA spends on one SLS. This is not just a small improvement, it is a total transformation of how we get to space. It changes the goal from just visiting space to actually living there. When the cost of moving things drops by 400 times, the rules of the game change. We can see the patterns of this success in how they built Pad 2. Pad 1 was the experiment. It proved that catching a rocket was possible. Pad 2 is the production version. It is built to be used over and over again with very little maintenance. They used lessons from Flight 5, Flight 9, and Flight 10 to make Pad 2 better. They saw where the metal was getting too hot. They saw where the vibrations were too strong. They reinforced the steel and updated the software. Now the tower can fuel the rocket, lift the ship onto the booster, and catch both of them. It is an all-in-one machine that resets for the next flight in hours, not months. This speed is their greatest weapon. China has been very open about their goals. They want to land people on the moon by 2030. They have been very good at hitting their dates. Their space station was built on time. Their moon robots landed on time. Originally, the United States was going to beat them by four years, but because of delays with the old-style rockets and ships, that gap is closing. NASA's own investigators say the moon landing will likely slip to 2027 or later. This is why the Starship catch is so important. It is the only way to move fast enough to keep the lead. 
By catching the booster, SpaceX can fly the same hardware again the very next day. Think about what happens when you don't have to build a new rocket every time. In the old days, you would spend nine months building a rocket, fly it once, and then watch it sink. That meant you could only fly a few times a year. With Pad 2 and the catch system, the rocket becomes an asset like an airplane. You fly it, you land it, you put more fuel in it, and you fly it again. This is called rapid reuse. It is the holy grail of rocket science. SpaceX has already proven they can do this with the smaller Falcon 9. They have landed those rockets over 200 times. Now they are doing it with the biggest rocket ever made. The hardware on Pad 2 is a display of engineering power. The arms are moved by massive electric motors and cables that can lift thousands of tons. The horizontal stabilizer uses laser sensors to track the rocket's position within a fraction of an inch. If the rocket is off by even a tiny bit, the system adjusts instantly. This is strategic intelligence in action. They didn't just build a bigger crane, they built a system that thinks and reacts in real time. This level of control is what allows them to skip the heavy landing legs and save all that weight for fuel and supplies. When we look at the history of technology, we see these moments where the impossible becomes routine. People said airplanes were impossible. People said landing a rocket on a ship was a stunt that wouldn't work. Each time, engineering mastery proved the doubters wrong. SpaceX has a culture of seeking out the hardest problems and solving them with physics. They don't care about what has been done before. They care about what the math says is possible. The tower at Pad 2 is the physical proof of that philosophy. It is a giant steel hand reaching into the sky to catch the future. The consequences of this success are already being felt across the industry. Other companies are now trying to copy SpaceX. They see that the old way of throwing rockets away is a path to bankruptcy, but they are are years behind. It took SpaceX a decade of failing and learning to get here. You cannot just buy this kind of knowledge. You have to earn it by blowing things up and fixing them. This is the justice of the marketplace. The companies that took risks are now the ones winning the contracts. The companies that played it safe are now asking for more money from the government to catch up. Your tax dollars are being spent in two very different ways right now. One way is paying for the old system that costs billions and and move slowly. The other way is supporting the new system that costs millions and moves at lightning speed. NASA is starting to shift more work to SpaceX because they see the results. They know that if they want to get to Mars, they need a system that can fly every day. They need a system that doesn't cost $4 billion every time someone pushes the start button. The success of Pad 2 is making it harder and harder for anyone to justify the old expensive way of doing things. The future projection is very clear to anyone watching the scoreboard. Pad 2 is just the beginning. SpaceX is already planning more pads in Texas and in Florida. Each one will be a refined version of the one before it. Soon they will start catching the upper stage of the rocket too. When that happens, the entire system will be fully reusable. No parts will be thrown away. At that point, the cost of going to space will drop to the cost of the fuel and a little bit of maintenance. This is how we get to a city on Mars. You cannot build a city if every supply ship you send has to be thrown away after one use. You need a fleet of ships that fly back and forth like trucks on a highway. The arms on Pad 2 are the gateway to that future. They represent a shift in how humans interact with the heavens. We are no longer just throwing things into the dark and hoping for the best. We are building infrastructure. We are building a machine that connects Earth to the rest of the solar system. The horizontal stabilizer might seem like a small technical detail, but it is the piece that makes the whole puzzle fit together. It provides the stability and safety needed to make catching rockets a routine event. When a 15-story building falls from space and stops perfectly in the grip of a tower, we are seeing the peak of human engineering. This is what mastery looks like. It is not about fancy words or long meetings. It is about steel, fire, and code working together to do something that should be impossible. Every time the chopsticks close around a booster, it is a victory for everyone who believes in progress. It shows that we can solve the hardest problems if we are willing to try new things. 
The tower is standing ready. The rocket is being prepped. The software is being updated. The next flight will come sooner than anyone expected. And it will happen again and again until the impossible becomes so common that we stop noticing it. That is the ultimate goal of any great engineering breakthrough. SpaceX didn't just land a rocket, they made it routine. Over 200 landings have been completed while competitors like Boeing and Blue Origin are still trying to reach the same level of reliability. The impossible has finally become infrastructure that we can depend on. Now Starship is ready to scale this success, turning the dream of reaching Mars from a science fiction story into a real engineering project. This breakthrough ensures that our future in space will be built on reuse, speed, and mastery.